Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's Word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah Riley, and today I am here with Krista Garcia. Woo! Hello. And then David Catalano is actually going to share with us what are you going to share, David? I don't want to butcher it. Yes. Well, so today um, we're going to be doing a series where we're going to be sharing about the biblical and logical points as to why we believe in the biblical account of creation and why it's important to have that view um, with the world that we're living in today. So, uh, you know, so one of the biggest things as Christians that we face is atheism and evolution. And a lot of atheists and evolution have a worldview that really pushes down and presses down against the Christian worldview mm -hmm. of creationism. So mm -hmm. much so that even many, um, many Christians have almost compromised some of these biblical principles. Yeah. And so we're going to be talking about some important reasons as to why we need to hold to these biblical principles. So, you know, the heart of this is not to just show people that you know, I think sometimes when we get in debates, it's just like show how much more I know mm -hmm. and we can use terminology that's really complicated and things like that. But the heart is really to show people the truth of Christ and the awesomeness of God when it comes to creation. Mm -hmm. And so part one, we're going to be talking about um, the creator. And that's I think the, the first part is the creator, because that's where it all starts. Mm -hmm. and so I just want to start with what we believe. So we believe God always existed and created the universe, mm -hmm. right? We believe the universe has a beginning, but the triune biblical God does not. Mm -hmm. God has always existed uh, since the beginning of time. And so we see this uh, in Genesis 1, uh, 1 through 3. I'm going to read it real quick. It says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. I want to see, this is actually really cool. The Trinity is actually within the first couple verses of the bible it says and the spirit of god which is the holy spirit was hovering over the surface of the waters then god who is god the father said right he uttered which that's jesus because jesus is the word of god let there be light and we also believe jesus is the light right god is the light and there was light and we also see this in john 1 1 when it says in the beginning the word already existed the word was with god Amen. and the word was God. Hmm. And I think it's important because, you know, with the Big Bang Theory and all these things and creation is such a huge foundation. It's, it's you know, if we can't believe what Genesis says in Genesis 1 through 3 or what Genesis or, or what John 1 says, which is mm -hmm. one of the pillars of the New Testament and the first book of the Old Testament, then we're going to we're going to look at the rest of the Bible obsolete. And I think mm -hmm. it's really important that we look at what the Bible says from a biblical point of view, but also the idea that there's some logical reasoning behind what the Bible is saying. Mm. And so with that, let's talk about what we're kind of arguing against, right? What kind of views are kind of starting to trickle into the Christian way of thinking? So atheists and evolutionists believe the universe was created without cause, right? And so they believe that, so a lot of people talk about the Big Bang, but the Big Bang only explains the early expansion of the universe, but no scientists, no, you know, uh, scientists with any credibility can actually say we know where all of the resources and energy came from to make the universe. All we know is there must have been, they believe it was a, a ball that all of a sudden just expanded, but they don't know where all of the resources and energy would have come from to make the universe. Hmm. And so, um, <clears throat> We call this argument the cosmological argument or the argument for causation. So they just believe that it just came to be. It came from nothing. Nothing became something. And so it's actually a pretty significant argument that is between Christians or cr people that believe in creation, the biblical account of creation, and people that believe in atheism that, oh, well, nothing came out of something. Um, so and the idea, the best way I would explain this is the idea of you know, if light turns on in a room, something had to have initiated that light, right? Someone had to have created that light structure and caused that light to turn on. Light doesn't just turn on with nothing causing that. And so that's one thing that we make that argument. And so 
we believe that God existed and he had all the resources to make the universe. And that's how the universe came to be. And so we believe that's the best answer. And I, th I believe it's very logical to believe like, hey, there's yeah. this almighty God that existed always and had all mm -hmm. the, the things needed to make the universe. Yeah. And so with that, why do we believe this biblically? Um, we're going to look at John 1, 1 through 5. It says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. The word was God. I'm reading through the New King James Version. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. So again, we see here that Jesus is the word, but he existed in the beginning and he is the very word of God. When the God, the father speaks, it is Jesus who goes throughout. And so all things were made through him and without him, nothing was made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. So here again, we see that Jesus is he exists in the beginning. This, the triune God exists in the beginning, and that's how everything was created. And so, again, my heart is not to get into the debates, right? Cosmological argument. I don't even know how to say it that well. <laughs> but I wanted to talk about, you know, the idea that someone made that light switch mm -hmm. and the beauty of that. You know, I think it takes a lot of faith yeah. to look at the amazing, vast beauty of the universe and, and, and the canvas of the skies mm -hmm. and to say that happened by chance that came from nothing yeah. rather than the idea that someone created that. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so that's the main principle I want to, to kind of bring when it comes to creation that we need to take away with. And I love Genesis 1 31 is when God mm -hmm. created the universe, he said, this is good. His creation is good mm -hmm. because he created it with order. He created it with purpose, right? If everything happened by chance, there would be no purpose to anything. Right. But the beauty is that since God created things, the principle that we can take away is as someone that believes in the biblical account of creation and says, hey, there's an ultimate designer, an, an intellectual designer, sorry, intelligent designer, that's the word, God Almighty who created the universe. Mm -hmm. And he did it intricately. And I believe because of that, he deserves worship. So with that, I want to go on to another really important verse. And this is Romans 1, 19 through 21. Yep. It says, I'm going to read from the New Living. It says, they know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. Mm -hmm. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky, right? We look at the vastness of the sky. We can look at the smallest molecules on earth and see that there is, there is an intelligent design behind these. Though everything God made... Mm -hmm. They can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature, right? When we think, well, all of this happened by chance, mm -hmm. it's hard to see that when you see the magnificence and the size, mm -hmm. you know, because if God were to create things, if he was as majestic and amazing as he is, he wouldn't create this small little world. And, mm -hmm. but I believe he's, he's such a mighty God that he made far more than what humans will ever even know mm -hmm. because he's an almighty God. Yeah. And that's what I think it's saying here. It's saying, Hey, He's, he's made it so that you can see his eternal power and divine nature where you just realize you are so small. And so, so they have no excuse for not knowing God. When people look at the vastness of everything and say, no, this, this didn't have a creator. It all just came to be. Uh, it just nothing came from something in such a complex, amazing way. There are many ways just denying the idea of a creator. Yeah. And it says, uh, they will have no excuse for not knowing God yeah. due to just looking at creation and the vastness of creation. Mm -hmm. Yes, they knew God, right? I think some people, they look at these things and they can see these characteristics of God, but they go, they, it says, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks, mm -hmm. right? They're like, I don't want to be under the authority of God. I don't want to accept that God has a reality that is different from mine. I'm going to make my own reality. I'm going to have my own bias. I don't want to have to give thanks to anybody. And they begin to think of foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, their minds become dark and confused. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of that with atheism and evolutionists is they begin to not have a purpose and they begin to go, well, we're just a clump of cells. We're going to die and not, you know, and then they, and then they also fashion God into these ideas of who is really not. Yeah. 
And so I just think I want to talk about why is it important that we believe in a creator, right? And I believe it's important that we understand there's an originator of mm-hmm. creation, an amazing designer. And, and I just want to say this, science is a good thing, right? Sometimes we're like, people are like, I don't believe in Christ, I believe in science, you know? <laughs> That's from Nacho Libre, right? <laughs> But I love this idea that science actually plays a significant role in understanding who God is. Mm -hmm. Because science is, it's the study of the the intelligent designer. We know that if God created something a certain way, we can study more about why he creates these things. And we can understand those patterns and apply them to different areas. I mean, the Bible talks about seeking truth Mm -hmm. so much so that there are the, some of the greatest scientists were actually strong Christian men who really believed mm. in the creator and studying his creation. In fact, the laws of physics, Isaac Newton, the laws of chemistry, taxonomy, astronomy, right? Galileo was a huge, uh, he, was a, he believed in the Bible and the scriptures. And even rocket science, a lot of those men that really poured into these different disciplines of science were strong Christian men that wanted to study mm-hmm. why God created his creation that way, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And so stu- mm-hmm. science is... So a lot, I think science has been kind of misinterpreted. I think the church has kind of given it a bad name, right? Mm. And I think that even atheists have kind of taken the name of science mm. and saying, oh, we're science, you're not. But I think we should understand that as Christians, it's like, no, we can reason and mm. bring logic and we can yeah. use science as a tool to try to understand why God created everything in the way he did. Mm. Science is a good way. Again, the guy that created the scientific method, I think his name is Francis Bacon. You know, that tells you everything right there, right? <laughs> but he did that because he he wanted to find divine truth. Mm. And so with that, we understand that, you know, science is a means that we can use to find truth. And we should understand that knowing there's a creator means that we have even more reason to understand him more by studying his creation and, and mm-hmm. what characteristics he's put in himself through creation. And so we argue what we call logic, right? So in that, in John 1, 1, when it says in the beginning was the word, that word for word is logos, which is where we get the word logic. It's where we get the word reasoning. And so God has a way of doing things. And that's what we should be studying. Not trying to create our own bias and saying things are made this way, but rather like Pastor Craig always says, You know, if you're going to, you know, gravity is real, whether we believe it or not. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And so if you're going to be like, I don't want to believe in gravity and trying to come up with some bias at the end of the day, gravity has laws. And no matter what we believe, gravity has its way of function because God designed it a certain way. Mm -hmm. And we should be trying to study the truth rather than trying to put our bias into things. Mm -hmm. And so with that, I think, I think that's something that's the science field is doing a lot now. Mm -hmm. They have a bias that they're trying to prove rather than trying to look at God's creation and see the reasoning behind why God created things Mm -hmm. from an open mind. And, and, and again, it is good that we test things and test truth and that's where the Bible can be tested. I mean, a lot of people, I mean, the fact that the Bible is still around Mm -hmm. in 2023, 2000 years later, and nobody has still been able to show that the Bible is, you know, in fact, they continue to prove how strong it is. Mm -hmm. But I love it because I, I, a lot of people use the example of Galileo, and this is where I just want to end <clears throat> on this. You know, a lot of people say that Galileo, right? He was they, a lot of scientists really appreciated the work that he did. He did with astronomy, mm-hmm. showing that the world revolved around the sun. But the crazy thing is, you know, even though the Catholic Church challenged him, Galileo actually believed in the scriptures. And I love this quote he says. He says. He, he, when he was challenged by the church, he said, I think in the first place that it is very pious to say and prudent to affirm. So he's saying it is righteous and it is, it is a good thing to affirm that the Holy Bible can never speak untruth. Mm. That was Galileo speaking, wow. yeah. a, 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 a renowned scientist. Mm-hmm. He said, whenever it's true meaning is understood. So he said, the Bible never speaks on truth. It's our interpretation of the Bible that we need to work on, right? And that's why we need the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. That's why we need to study the word and make yeah. sure that we're not bringing our own biases, but rather we are trying to conform to the creator, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Just like if we bring our biases against gravity and then we're wrong, we're going to feel it, right? right? Yeah. And so 
you know, with this part, I just want to emphasize the point of creation as creation is a foundation for us to understand. If we understand the creator, we can understand the beauty of pursuing that creator. Well, God almighty and understanding his reasoning and why he created the things that he did. And as we did that again, science can be a beautiful thing to help us to be even more in awe of how God created uh, the universe to be. So that's all I have for this section before we yeah. move on to the next one. But And I just love that you brought that up because I was just talking to someone recently and they were saying, well, the thing I don't like about Christians is everything is about faith and there's no science. But like you just talked about, the Bible is filled with knowledge. It's filled with science. It's filled mm -hmm. with evidence and right. um, just different resources and things that are really good is like there's a book by Josh McDowell who we've had on the podcast before. It's called Evidence That Demands a Verdict. That's a good one. Um, there's another one called just Case for Christ, his story, mm -hmm. and he was trying to disprove the Bible and just realizing that, you know, it actually is real. But that wasn't mm -hmm. his issue. His issue is like sometimes your heart is so hardened and you blinded yourself, like it says in Romans, you exchange the truth for a lie. Mm -hmm. And why? Because you read later, it says in first or sorry, Romans one. 24 um, and 25 it says so God abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their heart desired as a result they did vile thing vile and degrading things with each other's bodies they traded the truth about God for a lie so they worshipped and served the things God created instead of the creator himself who is worthy of eternal praise amen and Amen. that's the issue is that they don't want to submit to a holy God. Mm -hmm. They want to do their own thing. And that's how we get into homosexuality and sexual immorality and all of that. Just read Romans 1. I encourage you to do that tonight. Um, but also another resource is Ken Ham. He has amazing mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. So go check out him. I'll put all the things, um, answers in Genesis and all that. I'll put that yeah, in the description below. Um, but another thing is just I love the verse in Romans 10. 17 so just read all of romans tonight if you want but <laughs> it says road. that um faith comes by hearing and hearing about the message or the word of god like the message of christ and so we a lot of times don't have faith because the first issue is we don't believe that the bible is real we believe oh man created it so we'll do another podcast just explaining a different time of even more in depth like the the facts like give you the facts of why the bible there's no other book like do you want to share that really quickly that little short that you shared with us like there's throughout 1500 years yeah so within 1500 years with 46 <laughs> different authors in three different continents with three different uh languages um and uh and 66 Six books, books all of those intertwine together so perfectly and all which the is prophecies too and all the prophecies that have come true yes. you know and so and the bible is the most historically Amen. influential book Accurate. and even the most even atheists will agree that the bible is one of the most influent is the most influential book in yeah. history Amen. You know, so. yep so well, thank you so much for joining us on Calvary Conversations. If you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. Um, if you'd like to listen to us or ever get a podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. You can also follow us and check out our behind the scenes on Instagram at Calvary Conversations. And this is listener supportive. So if you'd like to donate to the podcast so we can continue to do this, you guys can donate in the description below. And next week, please join us for our second part on creation and praying that you guys have a blessed week. Thanks so much and God bless.